How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again, this time taking a look at empirical formula from analysis, percent composition. How do we know what the formulas even are for these things? All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about starting from percent composition, how do we get the empirical formula? So our objective is essentially that, determine the empirical formula given the percent composition of the elements that make it up. So first off, what is an empirical formula? Well, the empirical formula shows the lowest whole number ratio for all of the elements in a compound. It isn't necessarily actually how many atoms of each element are in an actual molecule. It's just telling us the ratio of all the elements. So for example, molecular formula for glucose would be C6H12O6, but the simplest whole number ratio, what is the ratio between those elements? Well, the empirical formula of glucose is CH2O. As you can see, well, hey, C6H12O6, all are divisible by 6. So you divide each one of them by 6, and you get CH2O. And that is the empirical formula. Okay, so the first step in determining the molecular formula is determining the empirical formula. So if we got this unknown molecule and we're trying to figure out what its molecular formula is, first step is figure out the empirical formula, and then we can, from there, figure out the molecular formula. So how do we determine this empirical formula? I keep saying we're able to do it. How do we do it? Well, we can perform an experiment like combustion analysis where we will be able to determine the percent composition of a compound. So how much of each element is there? What's the percent of hydrogen? What is the percent of carbon? What is the percent of oxygen? We can get that data from experimentation. Then once we know that, we can determine the empirical formula. So basically how you do that is you assume you have a 100 gram sample because then your percentages are now the grams of each element. And then you go, all right, well now I know how many grams of each thing there are. Why don't I convert those grams into moles for each of those elements? Now I know how many moles of each thing I got. And then you got to divide by the lowest number of moles so that it becomes one and the rest are whole numbers. Uh, and that's your empirical formula, right? So the big idea is you start with the mass and you go to moles by using that GFM. So you're going to use the gram formula mass for each of those elements. And you're going to get something like, all right, cool. Well, I'm, I'm finding that I got, you know, four moles of X. And I only have two moles of Y. And then you go, all right, well, what would the whole uh, mole ratio be? Well, if I got a four to two, I simplify that. It's the same thing as saying it's a two to one. So I really am saying that my empirical formula would be x2, y. It could be x4, y2, but we don't know that yet, right? So we're getting the empirical formula, the simplest whole number, mole ratio. All right, so an example. A compound is found to contain 50.05% sulfur and 49.95% oxygen by weight. What is the empirical formula for this compound? So let's remember our steps. Assume we got 100 grams. The percentages become the grams. And then we got to convert grams to moles and then divide by the smallest number. So let me show you how I set these up. I usually have a horizontal line for each element. So I'll go sulfur. I start here. And they tell me that I got 50.05%. Well, if I had 100 grams, the percent is the same thing. So I'm assuming 100 grams. So I got 50.05 grams of sulfur. Next step is I'm going to divide by the, uh, the GFM. I got to go grams to moles. So I'm going to go, you know, divide by the GFM of sulfur, which is 32.06 grams per mole. And that tells me that I have 1.561 moles of sulfur. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing for oxygen. I put oxygen. And they tell me that I got 49. 0.95%. I'm assuming 100 grams, so I got 49.95 grams of oxygen. And I'm going to divide by its molecular mass of 16.00 grams per mole. And that's going to tell me that I have 3.122 moles of oxygen. So now I got the moles of each thing. Check. So now same thing that I did, hey, if I had a 4 to 2 ratio, how do I simplify that? You divide by the smallest number, which is 2, and that's how you end up with a 2 to 1 ratio. But right now we have ugly numbers. We got 3.122 to 1.561. But the way that you get a simplified ratio is the same way. You divide by the smallest number. So now I'm going to divide each of them by the smallest number of moles, 1.561. 
and divide by 1.561. For sulfur, it's pretty straightforward. Divided by itself, I get 1. Oxygen, I plug and chug, and I get a number that is, if not exactly, but almost exactly 2. So that's telling me that I have 1 sulfur and 2 oxygen. So the empirical formula would be SO2. And that is my empirical formula. Okay, let's try another one. Let's throw in three elements. Compound is found to contain 64.8% carbon, 13.6% hydrogen, and 21.58% oxygen. By weight, what is the empirical formula of the compound? So remember, assume 100 grams, the percents become grams, convert grams to moles, and divide each by the smallest number of moles between the three. So these percents, you can ignore them and pretend they're grams. So again, I'm going to set up a horizontal line for each element. I got carbon, which is 64.80 grams. I got hydrogen, which is 21.5. Oh, nope. Wrong one. Sorry. 13.62 grams of hydrogen. And then oxygen, I got 21.58 grams. So now I'm going to convert grams to moles. I'm going to do this step. So I got to divide carbon by its GFM, which is 12.01 grams per mole. For hydrogen, it's going to be 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And for oxygen, it's going to be that 16.00 grams per mole. And all of these are divided, right? And then I'm going to get the moles of each. So I plug it into my handy dandy calculator. For carbon, I get 5.40 moles. For hydrogen, I get 13.5 moles. And for oxygen, I get 1.349 moles, right? So now what's my last, or yeah, my last step, essentially? Let's divide by the smallest number. Well, the smallest number is this 1.349. So I'm going to divide everything by that number, 1.349. For that one, I get a number that's almost exactly 4. I divide by 1.349 for this one, and I get something that's almost exactly 10. And I divide by 1.349 for the last one, and I get 1. So it's saying, well, carbon, I have 4 of them. Hydrogens, I have 10 of them. And oxygens, I have 1 of them. And you don't have to write that 1, right? If I just put oxygen, I know there's 1. And that is my empirical formula. That's how you do that. That's all. So summarize. What are empirical formulas and why are they important? And how do you determine the empirical formula from the percent composition data? And that's it in a nutshell, right? So I hope you found that helpful and I will see you in class. Goodbye.